When working in Excel, and particularly if you're going to be sharing your spreadsheets with colleagues or other people, it's really important that you control the data that goes into the spreadsheet. And we're going to explore a couple of methods that we can use to ensure that our spreadsheets remain as error-free as possible. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look at this spreadsheet just here, we have a list of employees. And in here we can see their department and their salary. Now, if I share this spreadsheet with, let's say, 10 other people, anybody can go into this spreadsheet and start making changes to these cells. Now, that might be fine. This might be a list that you want people to keep updated, but there might be certain cells or certain parts of this worksheet that you just don't want them to touch. For example, if you take a look in column I, you can see we have a couple of NA errors in here. Now, don't worry about those too much at the moment. If we click on one of these cells, you can see that it contains an index match formula. And again, if you're not sure what an index match formula is, we're going to cover that in a couple of sections time. All you really need to note now is that these two cells both contain formulas. Now, what I don't want to happen here is that when I send this spreadsheet to somebody else, they come into one of these cells and change this formula. Because it might be that the person who's changing it doesn't have particularly good Excel skills and they break the formula. Or it might be that they accidentally touch their keyboard, drop something on their keyboard, add something into the formula, and then again, it's broken. So we want to make sure that we put in as many controls as possible to ensure that things like this don't happen. Now, what we're aiming for here is in cell I3, I want to be able to type in an employee name and have it return the department and the salary. And that is basically what these index match formulas are going to do. They basically look at the name that we have in cell I3. They then look in the table, they find that name, let's say Lee Anderson, for example, and they'll return the department and the salary for that employee. So let's type in Lee Anderson just here. And when I hit enter, we should find that it returns the department that he's in and the salary because of these formulas. Now I can see that the salary doesn't have any formatting. So let's fix that. Let's apply some accounting formatting with two decimal places. So that's working fine. But what if I come in here and I type in, let's go for Laurie May and hit enter. I'm getting NA errors. Now, Laurie May does exist in the table, so why are these formulas not returning the department and the salary? Well, if I take a look at my employee name, I can see here is Laurie May, but notice that I've spelt her name wrong. So instead of an I on the end, I've used a Y. So if you have a spelling mistake in your lookup, it's not going to return the correct result. And this can reflect really badly on you, because if you go back to your manager and say, well, Laurie May doesn't exist in the table according to my formulas when they're actually there, then that isn't really a good look. So the method that I would use to ensure that people are inputting the correct names every single time is to use a data validation drop down list. So what we're going to do here is let's just add employee at the top make this a bit wider. And I'm just going to use my format painter to copy that formatting because we're going to add a little data validation drop down. So let's go to the data tab over to data tools. We're going to choose data validation. And on the settings tab, we're going to say that we want to create a list. Now the source for our list, well, we want to list all of the employee names. So I'm going to go to the first name in the employee name column, control shift down arrow to select the entire range and click on OK. So now I have this little drop down and I can select the names and it's correct every single time. So this really safeguards against spelling mistakes and people just entering in the wrong thing into the cell. So consider utilizing data validation lists. Now, the second thing that I'd like to show you in this lesson is how to protect individual cells. Because now we have our nice data validation drop down, our formulas underneath are working perfectly. Now, what about if I want to send this spreadsheet to other people? I want them to be able to edit the employee details down here and add new employees onto the bottom. I also want them to be able to make selections from this drop down, but I don't want them to be able to click in either of these two cells and start changing the formula. So what I can do here is I can protect these two cells that contain those formulas and leave everything else unprotected. Now, protection, I always think, works a little bit backwards. And the principle you need to get your head around is that every cell in Excel by default is locked. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, if every cell is locked, how can I just type into any cell? And if you don't believe me, let's right click on a cell. Let's go to Format Cells and the Protection tab. Notice the locked checkbox is selected and you'll find that no matter what cell you click in your spreadsheet. Now, the reason why we can still type into lock cells is that this locking doesn't take effect until we protect the worksheet. So until then, everything is still unlocked. So if we want to make certain cells editable and other ones locked, what I would do here is I would select all of the cells that I want people to be able to change. So I'm going to say control shift down arrow. I also want them to be able to use that drop down. Then I'm going to right click, go to format cells, and we're going to unlock those cells. Let's click on OK. So now when I go up to the review tab, I'm going to say protect sheet. I'm not going to use a password. Let's click on OK. And now what we'll find is that these cells are still editable. So if I go down here, I could change this to sales, not a problem. But if I try and make any changes to these two cells where we have the formulas, I'm going to get an error message. It says the cell or chart you're trying to change is on a protected sheet. So these two cells are protected or locked and everything else where I need to make changes, all of those cells are editable. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.